Welcome back, Zerke fans, to Nanalisa Dawn. I remain your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we are back to the games, the exhibition matches. FFC versus Diamond FFC going for the Tank Factory, and Diamond going for the Ampbot Factory on Onyx Cauldron. Not sure why tanks. Am sure why Ampbots. Because water. Plenty of water. Nourishing, life giving water. At least for Ampbots. Tanks can't really do anything with it. But Ampbots heal up in water, so that works. Diamond going for, it looks like, primarily Archer-based. Again, this is before the Archer change nerf buff. I don't know. They, they got they got their impulse thing reduced from being essentially a lock-in-place to just being more damage with a bit of pushing. So, I guess it's a nerf. But they're also a bit cheaper. So, it's a, it's a slightly less harsh nerf. But it's still pretty strictly a nerf. Okay, thanks, Wesley. Yep, totally a nerf. All right, I, I, it looked like a nerf. I mean, archers are kind of weird. They used to be totally useless because you needed to actually refill them in the water, and that that was a bit of a problem. And then they became something that would just work without being filled up in water, and then they got used all the time because they're really, really good, and they don't end up having much team kill potential, and they also stop other units from really doing anything. But now they're... Sh but the thing is they lock down units all the time, and the latest version, not this one, this is the next to latest version, they couldn't... They can't lock down units anymore because the whole point of the water gun is that it... Well, not that much the point of the water gun. It's supposed to be able to push units around a little bit, but weight in the spring engine is kind of weird, so it's a little difficult to make some units get pushed around and other units not and try to balance that out. Is, it's a bit of a nightmare. So, archers now have a pulsed weapon, which can still push around a little bit, but not so much as to lock down, and lock down units and prevent them from firing. That's the important thing. So anyway, we have that, and with that, looks like, yeah, Archer and a Duck. Diamond getting a pretty pretty strong opening right now. FFC is able to be, take the early expansions as well, but a little bit slower. On the other hand, with a little bit more overdrive to their name, or a little more energy to their name. So on the other hand, they do have that going for them. But Diamond is expanding a lot faster, so right now it's it's kind of going to come down more to whether or not the harassment works or who harassment works for. Because at this point, Diamond is doing a fine job of harassment. This archer will have a bit of a hard time. Won't be able to really deal with the welder. Especially now with that Lotus support. Yeah, that archer's dead. That that archer decided to commit suicide in a less than productive way. Or actually... Nope! Oh, it almost got the Lotus. Oh, if it had actually been close enough to the Lotus, it would have managed to do it. So close. Not enough. But close. At any rate, FFC's commander... That's kind of what I was talking about there. You know, getting pushed back, unable to get in. But yeah, that Lotus is done. Actually, this welder's probably done too. Dying Friends Harassment will at least be able to get rid of the Metal Extractor and has scared the welder off from taking the other Metal Extractors. And they are searching! Trying to find that welder to get rid of it because they kind of have to at this point. I mean, the welder is going to be a problem. It's going to be building stuff and making it more difficult for later harassment to work. On the other hand, it's also got a gun. That's a tough thing to deal with. Same time, Dying Friend's own expansion attempts have been stymied by Kodachi, so it's not like FFC is doing this without actually taking any revenge, but at the same time, FFC is still behind by 5 metal per second, so it's not the best situation. I mean, they've made it work, it's just slower than I'm sure they'd like. Still, they're managing to get the Southwest with very little contention. I mean, that, that one Kodachi is for now at least, stop the Conch from getting in. While there are likely to be more archers and ducks getting over to the southwest to try to take it, it's not really that much, honestly. So at this point, Diamond is in a surprisingly iffy position. I mean, FFC's, FFC should be able to build up, again, a reasonably strong economy. They've been able to hold back what Diamond has gone in for harassment on. While, on the other hand, this archer-duck combo is preventing much from getting over to the northeast. The commander will be able to stop it. What has it gone for? Lightning gun? Lightning gun. Yeah. So FFC's gotten their lightning gun up, and that will be it for the ducks. But at the same time, it's not like Dimefriend is doing too bad either. I mean, like I said, they're not able to really block the expansion over the northeast anymore. But they are at least able to... You know, they were at least able to slow it down a little bit. Keep an economic advantage a little bit longer than their opponents, and turn that into very likely more of a military advantage. I mean, these archers will be able to stop the Kodachi, probably be able to stop the welders. This is a lot of nearly naked expanding going on over the southwest, so these welders are actually potentially under some threat. 
Not entirely sure how this is going to work. But this is still a little bit iffy. And yeah, Kodachi's coming in here. Not even able to do anything. This is why archers were nerfed. That That is why they were nerfed. That specific fight right there, the entire reason they were nerfed. No, but the fights like that, that was that was an issue. And archers... Archers aren't going to be able to do that anymore. Or at least not for not in the next patch. That might change. We'll see what happens. I mean, archers might become useless, which... That's not... I don't know. Knife it. Archers are kind of this knife edge for balance. That is always the weird thing. Largely because of the fact that their weapon... It has this weird interaction that stops units from doing anything. And just locking down units is so much more powerful than killing them because... Well, it, may, it basically is killing them. I mean, the only difference between locking that unit down and killing it is that locking unit or killing it requires more metal to get the unit back. Locking it down just means you have to get it back by stopping the lockdown process. So it's a bit cheaper to recover, but they're basically dead, at least for the time for the time they're being locked down. That's obviously a problem. But yeah, I think. I think if the damage, just if the numbers get tweaked a little bit, it should be fine. Like the archers, yeah, they can't push things around as much, but as long as they're dealing enough damage to justify their cost, they'll still be used. I mean, they'll still probably push things down around a little bit, but I'd have to check it. I haven't had a chance to play around with it too much. And like I said, these replays were from a week ago. These were requests, so the next match after this will be one that is on the latest version. See if I can go to add in Sony or something where amps are actually add in Sony's a jump bot map. I don't know. Find one where amps, maybe, hopefully find one where the amps are used. Hmm, at any rate. Time for another, I've seen a bit of a Calm Wars. FFC looks like they're gonna, yeah, FFC's gonna be winning this. Time for choice of a Stardust kind of makes sense, but at the same time is not really enough. So the Stardust going down, that pretty much opens everything up. FFC should be able to get in here and just Time for Commander won't have really much else. I mean, they have the terraforming that's blocking them from getting hit by the pickets, but yeah, that's only going to work for so long. Over on the south side of the map, though, Dying Front is managing to take the southwest. They got rid of the welders, got rid of the slightly defended expansions. This expansion over to the southwest, I mean, this metal extractor over to the southwest, not nearly as naked, but that's not that's not a position that's going to stop anything else from happening. Like, yeah, it's a bit of a firebase potentially, but not much else. Okay. Arphelius, could you not throw in reviews of the game in chat? Especially for someone who expects to be able to play an RTS with a gamepad, because that's, like, not a thing. It's been tried. It does not work. Unless it's only designed for consoles. Not really the time. Although I do agree with the thing they were talking about, how there are probably too many keys. There are, there are like, having gone through and set up a hockey system that uses a bit less of the keyboard than the default setup while still hitting all the buttons. Like, yeah, there's there's a lot of keys. There's probably too many keys. Well, actually, no. The main the main issue I found with 0K is because of the fact that you can select multiple unit types at once, but all the keys are the union of all the options they can have, you have to deal with that when you're thinking of what hotkeys to use. So it makes it a lot harder just because the amount of hotkeys you have to use is a combination of all of the commands and all the states of all of the units you have selected at once. Which can get kind of complicated, where you have a fly... Wait, a fly state? Oh yeah, there's a scout. So like, sliding a plane, I got a fly state, I have returned to, return to resupply, but I also am selecting a bunch of amp bots, so I also have float state. And like, yeah, that that's more of a consequence of the way that the unit selection is meant to not require you to have these subgroups, kind of like the way Blizzard games tend to. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that you have to figure out all the hockeys with respect to what they all do. And the United States is more of a holdover from Total Annihilation. It kind of makes sense, but it is a holdover from Total Annihilation. And it's one of those things I've never really been too sure about. Especially with things like hold position. Like, you know, move state... Yeah, I guess it kind of makes sense, but at the same time, having to hold position by changing the move state, usually twice, because the default move state is actually two steps away using the hockey. Yeah, that's that's not that quick. Oh, I see, Orph. Okay, Orph is just copying up this review to make it the resident copy pasta. Though, again, it's not like it's... It's not invalid. But it's also not the game at hand, so I'm going to shut up about it now and talk about the Grizzly that's going to kill off FFC's commander. 
This Chris is gonna kill FSC's commander. Dying friend, why are you pulling our commander out of the- what the- Why did- oh, they weren't. FSC's pulled the commander out of there. That's why. That makes more sense. FSC, good job pulling the commander out of there. You're still gonna die, but at least you died doing something in the process. Now this Grizzly's gonna come in here. And then it's gonna be it. And then Dying is probably gonna come in with something else to help reclaim. Although, to be fair, I'm not actually sure how that's gonna work, because... FFC's got their Cyclops up, what you're supposed to use against heavy units, and that should do the trick. Not the not the Phoenix, though. The Phoenix does nothing. But yeah, FFC's commander is pretty well dead. Trying his best to get out of here. Yeah, there's its own hole. Oh, that was unlucky. I think the Grizzly might actually be able to get in here anyway. No, no, it can't. The commander got a bit too far down. The Grizzly's turret can't turn down far enough. Well, FFC's playing Dwarf Fortress now. Not much that we've done there. I mean, okay, that's not entirely true. There is air. You can send in a couple ravens. Or a leak. Wait, a leak really? At this stage in the game? We only have plus 30 metal, dude. It's not, not much. Especially if we're gonna lose that, that grizzly to a cyclops. Oh, well, that is painful. Right, because the cyclops got changed back. So yeah, it's got the slow beam. I mean, again, that's why it's an anti. It's one of the big reasons it's an anti-heavy, because especially for units like grizzly with really high alpha attacks, like really high alpha, really high reload attacks, the slow beam makes it almost a minute between shots. Well, at least a good 30 seconds between shots. That's not something you can really work with, to be perfectly honest. Still, though, Dimefront doesn't have that much of an economic advantage over FFC. Attrition-wise, FFC has been doing quite well. They've got a Scorpion coming up on top of that, which mostly will just be used to get rid of some of the Grizzlies. I mean, it won't really do too much beyond that. The main issue, of course, is this expansion over to the south side of the map, which is... It's being it's, it's being taken care of. It's, it's being destroyed. This is it. It's gone. Over the north, some attempts to blitz out stuff, but Grizzly will take care of that, no problem. So, at this point, FFC's kind of lost the south side of the map. They lost the southwest. They, they're holding on to the north for now. Mostly thanks to the Emissary and the, and the Cyclops, but that's about it. Although the Scorpion... No, never mind. It's not it at all. The Scorpion should be able to get in this. There's nothing defending anything to the south. Nothing that's going to stop the Scorpion and Blitzes from getting in here and wiping out all the metal extractors. So Dimefriend doesn't have a huge amount of time available to actually deal with this, and they're also focusing on stuff that's... I mean, I guess I see why. Focusing on the edges, but with a Leco, really... It's clear there's stuff in the back in the base that needs to be taken care of, like this Strider Hub, or some of the Caretakers. Maybe there's a Fusion Plant. Why did you go for a Leco? I really don't know. I can only assume Dying Throne streaming this, but I wasn't watching the stream at the time, so I have no idea whether or not this actually was streamed and what exactly they were thinking. Actually kind of curious. But at this point, I think FFC should be able to push this through. Dimefront is very little in the way of defense, so the Scorpion should be able to get through most of what's there anyway. If not then, the Blisses certainly... I mean, if not then. The Blisses might just be able to get through it without it anyway. Well, the biggest being a bit of an issue... Oh, hey, the Leco actually sort of doing something. Not something that it was that needed to be it to do, but something. So, hey, that's a thing. However, now that we have Ravens, that's more what I want to see. Like, there's Ravens coming in. Those are going to be able to do a lot more granular work. Help get rid of some of the stuff over here. Like, some stuff over in the northeast. Maybe get... Do some scouting in the main base. See if there's anything they can find. That'll help. Oh, that is clever. Set the Scorpion on fire. Good choice. Unfortunately, the Leco is not up yet. Oh, it is. Diamond, you got a Leco. I realize air units can be difficult to remember, but... You got a Leco. You, you got the Scorpion. You... You had a dead turret. Well, not dead turrets. It would have been like three Lego hits to kill it, but still. You had some damage dealt on it. Still good stuff. But no, that Scorpion should be able to get in. Wipe. I'd probably wipe out that Grizzly if it wanted to, but it looks like that is not FFC's goal right now. And I don't say I blame him. I don't blame them. Like, they, they are going around harassing the sides. That's what you want to do. Going for a direct assault when your opponent has Lecos and Ravens and the Grizzlies on top of that. That's. It's 5,000 damage before you really get much in off the Scorpion. It might be able to stun at the Grizzlies before any shots happen. Maybe, but I don't think so. Because, again, that's the just the initial hit. On the other hand, FFC coming in here will be able to scout out what's going on. I won't be able to 
kill much? Maybe killed a couple Phoenix? No, never mind. There's actually nothing stopping this. Nothing at all stopping this. This is totally unexpected by Dimefroind. The Stinger is the only defense. Everything here for Aryan is actually very heavily threatened. And the Scorpion's not going to be taking any damage in the process. So this is actually... This is good. Scorpion should be able to take out the expansion over to the eastern side of the map. Possibly get into the main base directly. I mean, the Swifts... Ah, oh, only lasts so long. Angler's coming up, gets rid of the Swifts. But at the very least, FC does know where Dimethrain is standing as far as any air capacity goes. On the same same token, though, FC's also revealed that they themselves have air units. So we should be seeing Dimethrain build a little bit of anti-air. Huh? No, no Raptors. A few Anglers, that's all they're really worried about. Get the Anglers in here, stop the Bombers from being destroyed while they're waiting around in the holding pattern. Yeah, that, that's probably enough. Of course, at this point, the secondary problem is that FFC is coming in with all these emissaries, which were up in the north side of the map for most of this game, or not most of the game, for the last five minutes or so. And there's nothing stopping them from getting in here. Same time, the Blitz is over to the south, waving out all the metal extractors, as I kind of expected them to do before, but they are actually doing now. Although, Dimefriend rather cleverly setting up terraforming around the metal extractors to make sure that they aren't going to be killed as easily as they would otherwise be. Now, with the use of air units, at least. So, a good choice in the terraforming there. We don't really see enough terraforming. It's good to see that we are seeing a little bit in high-level play because it's kind of an unbeatable defense. Like, you have the terraforming, there's not much your opponents can do about it. Same time, though, there's the Scorpion. Oh, and the Scorpion got the Leco on the pad, too. Nicely done. Leco's down, pad's down. That's going to massively reduce how much Dimethrain can actually use in the air. That's going to pretty much stop them from using air entirely. Dimethrain coming in for some revenge, and again, they, they have these metal extractors for the rest of the game. But the problem, of course, is that Scorpion is going to come around and start stunning other stuff. It'll probably stun out the factories, honestly. And while there is another Leco in production, it's not and it's not a position where it's going to be able to get the money to actually go. Looks like most of the money is actually being diverted over. Where's it being diverted over to? This is what? Ten, no, 10 build power on top of... Oh, I see. This is low priority, so there's only 16 build power total. Yeah, that's not really enough. Scorpion should be able to come around here and take out the factories, and I think if that's done, FFC will win. On top of the second Scorpion. Like, yeah, this is the thing. Dimefrain has the Southwest and pretty much has it for the rest of the... Like, they've got it. They've got it. It's theirs. There's no easy way FFC can take that, and FFC, unless they focus on getting a bunch of Ravens and bomb out all the metal extractors, that is Dimefrain's. But at the same time, FFC has a Scorpion in the back of Dimefrain's base that can just walk out here and wipe out Dimefrain's entire production capacity. So, yeah, not really a great position for Dimefrain to be in, to be honest. Oh, right, the Anglers. That's why you don't go in. Because the Anglers. The Anglers are a problem. Oh, Dimefrain getting kind of paranoid. Building a lot of Lotuses as well, just noticed. But it's not necessarily going to be enough. Scorpion coming in here. Stuns out one of the Grizzlies. The other Grizzly should be able to stop the Blitzes just because of the fact that the Blitzes are going to have a little hard time getting in quickly. But that's fine. Even with the uphill climb, those Blitzes are now on the hill. Lico is up. Does manage to get rid of one of the Blitzes, but that's not going to be enough. That, that Grizzly is not in a happy position. That is not a happy Grizzly. At the same time, Scorpion over in the main base, getting rid of the Ambot Factory. Should be able to get rid of the air factory as well. The Leco has been built, and the Raven Leco combo. No, the Leco is not able to actually do anything. Because that was Leco that came to try to deal with that one blitz. So this should be it. The Scorpion here will go down. But Dimefrain, I don't think they're gonna be holding. They're gonna be throwing the towel here. This is this is it. And that yep, there it is. Dimefrain surrenders. Gets legendary land. I have not seen this in a long time. Legendary Landscaper Metal. But yeah, Dimefrain throws in the towel. FC wins. Very even match, though. Metal income is almost dead even. Metal usage is almost dead even. Army value. FC had a bit of an advantage, but largely just came down to the fact that Dimefrain... They didn't really use this Grizzly in a way that allowed them to deal a bunch of damage. Like, FC just switched off to a lightweight unit set. Switched off to Scorpions. They able to get rid of the Grizzlies. And Dimefrain just had all these Grizzlies going around, which admittedly you're playing Amph. That's kind of what you do. But at the same time, I don't know. It just didn't, like, it didn't work. Wasn't really put in a position where it could have taken out FFC's base and wiped out their economy. And there were a lot of spots in, on the map that could have been attacked. I mean, FFC's main base could have been attacked. Dimefrain 
just didn't really go for it. They had their economy. They were in a really good map position, but this was entirely naked, so it was easy enough for FFC to wipe it out. And for the rest of it, a single Scorpion wasn't dealt with. The units were going around to try to find the Scorpion. They just let the Scorpion go in the back of the base. So yeah, I think... I can kind of see why the late attention was not paid to the Scorpion, but I feel like if that Scorpion wasn't there, Dying Friend would have had a better chance of getting through. Not great, but they had a lot of metal... They had 12 metal worth of extractors that was protected by the Terraform. So it still would have been a harder situation for FFC to, to really claw back in from. Anyway, that was that, so I'm going to have one more replay, which I should have prepared beforehand, but for some reason I didn't. So we're going to have one more replay that I'm going to figure out right now.